<laughs> I'm Kelly Robinson. I use she, her pronouns, and I am proud to serve as the newest president of the Human Rights Campaign. So I got to start by giving some gratitude, y'all. We have our HRC board members in the house. We got Jay Kuo and Henry Robbins and Lauren Verruccio and Johnny Lee and Jody Patterson and Jamal Webster here tonight. We also have some visiting HRC board of directors. We got Morgan Cox and Jordan Barth and Aaron Walton here tonight. I also got to give a thank you to our HRC board of governors who are here. We've got Danielle Bazzorti. Dolores Covergaru, Stephen Gossman, Michael Kay, jo Joe Malizio, Kelly Muffet, John Morrison, Marsha Namowitz, Joseph Platia, Chris Sherm, Vikram Vishnubakta, and Michael Westwood. Yo, we rolling deep in New York City, okay? And I gotta take a personal point of privilege to thank my mentor and friend, Alexis McGill Johnson, the president of Planned Parenthood Federation of America, who's joined us. This is the room to be in, y'all. We got political leaders, corporate titans, cultural icons who have joined us. This is the room where it's happening, okay? And of course, I have to thank the people who literally made this dinner happen, our chairs, Danielle, Vikram, and Michael. Give it up for them one more time. It means so much to me to be at one of my first HRC dinners of the year in a city that is steeped in so much lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, and queer history and possibility, y'all. I'm talking about Broadway, where queer performers have found their voice for generations. Y'all, here, there's a stadium named after Billie Jean King. There's a park. There's a park named for Marsha P. Johnson, y'all. And there are more lesbian bars here than anywhere in the country. And I've been to all three of them, okay? <laughs> My people, this is the city of Langston Hughes and so Susan Sontag, of Sylvia Rivera and Irva Shivaya, y'all. This is the city of Stonewall, the launch pad of Act Up, the birthplace of drag. This is New York. You know, they say that if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. But the truth is that for so many LGBTQ plus people, for so much of our history, you could only make it in New York. You could have a career in New York. You could have love in New York. You could have family, community, and joy in New York. And essentially, this is the fight that we're fighting for, for the chance to simply make it to be able to live, to love, to grow old, not just in New York, but everywhere, but anywhere. That's why we're here today, because this is the fight that we're in, and we know that we are at a critical crisis moment. And it is all on the line, y'all. You know, anyone that knows me knows that I grew up in the church. Okay, uh, and when I was growing up, we were Catholic, but maybe not quite the kind of Catholic that you're thinking. My aunt, she used to describe us as black Catholics. Now, I don't know if that's an official denomination, all right? <laughs> but what she meant is that we were the double clapping, falling out in the aisle. If you didn't burn 500 calories praising and your wig didn't shift, you hadn't praised hard enough type of Catholics. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And I'm telling you this because I learned some of the most important lessons about what it means to be an organizer while I was sitting in those pews. We had a preacher that could preach, let me tell you. And he used to say that people come to church for one of two reasons. Some folks are coming for prosperity, to thrive in their circumstance, to do even better, to, to pray on their lottery ticket maybe. But other folks are coming for salvation for deliverance from harm and loss, to survive, just to get by. And it's that. It's this idea of salvation, of survival, that's never been more true than in this moment. Because this moment is about survival for LGBTQ plus kids and our families, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. 
This moment is about survival for our trans community, especially black trans women. We're talking about folks that leave the house every morning wondering whether or not they'll make it home again. This is about survival for people who are being denied access to basic health care. I'm talking about those people who live in one of the 17 states that have banned abortion access. I'm talking about trans folks who lost access to Medicaid coverage for gender-affirming, life-saving care. I'm talking about the families in Utah where a ban on gender-affirming care was just signed into law. This is about survival for the one in two black men and the one in four Latinx men who have sex with men who will be diagnosed with HIV in their lifetimes. Y'all, this moment is about survival for those being threatened by hate and extremism. I mean, the people that we have lost to gun violence at Club Q, at Pulse, at Half Moon Bay, at Monterey Park, at Uvalde, and too many more places to name. This is about survival for those we have lost to police brutality, including the son, father, friend, and brother, Tyree Nichols. This moment is about the very survival of our people. And we have to be clear that there are people in power out there that are preying on our children, especially our trans youth. There are people in power that are profiting from our oppression. There are people in power that are putting off our progress just because they can. And trust me, they're not only coming for the progress of the last 50 years, they're coming for the progress of the last 400. And we have to take them at my, their word, y'all. We have to believe that they mean what they say. Because from Justice Clarence Thomas to Tucker Carlson to Marjorie Taylor Greene, they are saying the quiet parts out loud. They don't think that we're free and equal. They don't think that we should have control over our own bodies. They don't think that we're full participants in this democracy. But I know that somebody came here today to show them exactly how wrong they are. Is that somebody you? Is that somebody at your table? Y'all, that somebody is us. New York. New York, there is a something big that's starting right now. You know, my pastor used to also say that church isn't just a place that you go, but it's something that you have. You have it when you're in community with people that share your values, that are united in the struggle for freedom, that are willing to fight for change. And I don't know about you, but I'm having church up in here tonight, okay? Yes. Yes. Because today represents a new day in our movement and a new chapter for the human rights campaign. So I have this to say to all of our opponents out there. In the words of G-Unit, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. You better ask somebody. Oh, yes, y'all, because this new chapter of the Human Rights Campaign, it's going to center equality and liberation for all, period, and without exception. Yes. I'm talking about trans justice. I'm talking about racial justice. I'm talking about reproductive justice and a whole lot more, y'all. Together, in this next chapter, we are going to build political power to win today and also strengthen our democracy for tomorrow. You know one thing I'm sure about? Is that Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is never going to become President DeSantis. Not on our watch. Not on our watch, y'all. Yes, and this new chapter, y'all, of the Human Rights Campaign, we are going to have the audacity, the audacity to build a world where every LGBTQ plus person can be safe, celebrated, and yes, joyful in every aspect of our lives, y'all. Yes. We're going to keep building workplaces that work for all of us. We're going to keep building schools where all kids are welcome. We're going to build a health care system grounded in equity and inclusion. We're going to fight, keep fighting, to defeat stigma and end the HIV epidemic in our lifetime, in this generation. 
and we are gonna lift up artists and actors and change makers so that we can show the world what queer lives look like, what queer love looks like, what queer brilliance is, y'all. This is the next chapter. We deserve better, so we are going to demand better. And I'm so proud to say that we are already making progress. I mean, just think about what we've gotten done in the last few months alone. Brittany Griner came home. Yes. MJ Rodriguez got her flowers and became the first trans woman to win a Golden Globe. Amy Schneider became a Jeopardy icon. And together, we helped elect Mara Healy and Tina Kotek as the first lesbian governors in this country. Y'all, together, we sent a rainbow wave to the U.S. Congress. Together, we passed the Respect for Marriage Act, y'all. And together, we took important steps towards ending the blood donation ban on gay and bi plus men. HRC, we know how to do the work. Just last year, there were 315 anti-LGBTQ plus bills that were introduced in states across the country. And guess what? We defeated 91% of them, 91%. So when I say we know how to do the work, I mean it. And we also know that we've got more work to do. Look, I was actually in the room when the Senate passed the Respect for Marriage Act. Thank you so much, Senator Schumer and Senator Gillibrand, who are here with us tonight. And on that day, on that night, my wife and I, we brought our one-year-old uh, to the Senate gallery, and they were seated to my left. Um, and to the right were the owner and survivors from Club Q. And it reminded me of a poem about Club Q that James Davis wrote. He said, I stand for the rainbow, I stand for the rain. This is what some call simultaneity. The idea that you can have two feelings, complex, even conflicting, in the same moment, in the same breath. You can feel both joy and grief. You can feel both hope and despair. You can feel both victorious and a little bit defeated. And in this moment, I keep thinking that our task isn't to ignore the pain. Our task isn't to ignore the darkness. What our task is, is to choose the light anyway, to keep choosing hope, to keep choosing victory, to keep choosing joy. HRC, when it starts raining, we have to stand for the rainbow, y'all. So make no mistake. This is a moment of crisis. It's a moment of crisis for all of our communities in our entire country. But the good news is that with crisis always comes a reckoning. And with reckoning, the unique opportunity for bold and transformative change. A renaissance, if you will. Oh, I said renaissance. I said renaissance. Yes. I already have my tickets for the Renaissance 2023 World Tour, okay? Y'all, I remember Renaissance and Break My Soul like the song was dropped last night, okay? I'd be singing in my room with my bonnet on like I'm on the Super Bowl stage whenever I hear it. And there's actually this line in Break My Soul where Bay says, I'm taking my new salvation. I'm gonna build my own foundation. You won't break my soul. Y'all, that's the Reverend Dr. Beyonce Knowles Carter. <laughs> reminding us, she's reminding us to never let anyone break our souls. No politician, no pundit, no one. She's reminding us to believe that change is not only possible, but it's inevitable when we work together. So now is the time, y'all. Now is the time to show them, to show our opposition just how powerful we are. Are you ready? Yes, my people. But the question, 
The question is not whether or not we can win. The question is what are you willing to do to win? Is anybody ready to fight? Oh, I got to hear you. Is anybody ready to fight? I want them to know from Florida to Utah to Tennessee, are we ready to fight? Yes. Then come on, y'all. Let's fight together. Let's do it without exception. And let's get free. Thank you.